When you walk into a store to buy a 4K television and take a look around the store, you generally look at the display to guess how good the quality of the display is in comparison to the one next to it. But truth be told, even if you were to just buy the best 4K TV out there, is that really going to change your viewing experience? Especially if most of what you watch is OTT platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, which are streamed over the internet. Let's find out in this video some important things that you must know before making your purchase so you don't overpay for your next television. Hi, I'm Altaf and this is your Tech Takeaway for today. Four K TVs are common as Full HD TVs of the 2010s, and many people upgrading TVs are nowadays aiming for a 4K TV to be their minimum choice, especially when their pricing have become extremely competitive and very affordable. There are three important points to remember about streaming platforms on a 4K TV before buying. This is irrespective of it being an LED, QLED, OLED, Mini LED, so that you don't make the mistake that I did. The first point being, 4K content on OTT platforms isn't that common. In my view, 25-30% to of the content on most OTT platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Hotstar is currently not in 4K. Some of the noteworthy recent day titles released on Netflix aren't even available in 4K. This should tell you that although it is good to have a 4K TV, you aren't going to enjoy a rerun of Game of Thrones or Stranger Things in 4K just because your TV has it. The platform itself doesn't stream that. There are many reasons for this. Some of the old movies and shows were never shot to be viewed in 4K. And even in some of the theatres, the native resolution today in which you get to see a movie is in 2K. Hence, content aimed for these theatre consumption isn't worth the cost to produce it in 4K by filmmakers. And have any one of us ever complained about the clarity of movie in theatres? Well, that is because the viewing distance makes the massive difference on overall perception of quality and pixels. Hence, beyond a certain distance, 4K or Full HD wouldn't really make a difference. The second point is about the cost of streaming 4K is very expensive. Netflix 4K streaming plan is $7.99 per month. And the $6.49 Full HD plan does not even come with HDR capabilities. Which is really sad that even after many advanced phones today supporting HDR content, to watch that content quality, you still will have to get the best plan of Netflix. And in a year, you will have to pay possibly 9,000 for just watching Netflix. Disney Hotstar 4K plan is 1,499 yearly, while a non 4K plan is for 899. And even after you buy the 4K plan, you won't be able to watch the original Avengers in 4K or even the Age of Ultron. While both these movies were produced by Disney itself. Amazon Prime is really good in this case, as their one plan has all of it together for $9.99 in a year. I must say, I'm really happy that they own AWS as they can really hold the end-to-end -end service of their video streaming and make it available at a great cost for consumers. If you are viewing Amazon via Fire Stick, then ensure your Fire Stick is 4K enabled. Else, even after having a 4K TV, you won't be able to view 4K content as via the Fire Stick. And Apple TV Plus is just 99 per month for all kinds of content. Although there isn't a lot of content to watch, actually not even 5% of what Netflix may offer, but the quality of Apple TV shows is really good. Not sure if it is the codec standards which they are using to shoot it, or is it just the sheer brilliance of camera equipment? But series like The Morning Show, Foundation just look amazing in 4K Dolby Vision. You know one platform that streams Full HD, 4K, 6K and 8K all for free? YouTube. Yes, that's true. Hence, like the video and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more such videos for free and without any plans. All these are not even considering your internet plan. On data consumption, Full HD buffering will take approximately 1.9 GB to 2.5 GB per hour, while a 4K HD will take 3.5 GB to up to 7 GB per hour, which means 2.5 hours of one 4K movie and you would have utilized anywhere between 16 to 20 GB. Now that would be a massive cost if you aren't on an unlimited internet data plan. The third point is, not all content on OTT platforms support formats like HDR10 or Dolby Atmos 5.1. 
When we say HDR, we are relating it to all kinds of HDR. HDR, HDR10, 10+, HLG, Dolby Vision, and Technicolor. All of these formats are used by filmmakers to be able to adjust colors of each frame in a way which makes it look more cinematic for the viewer. Remember, this isn't 4K or anything to do with the resolution. It is technically color science. On the other hand, having the features in your TV cannot make any show or movie look better which isn't made with these formats. Titanic as a movie can be a great example here. It isn't a movie which was shot using any of these formats. Hence, if your TV supports HDR10+, it will still stream Titanic the same way it would for a non-HDR television. So thinking about buying a TV based on terms like HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, Dolby Vision and later finding out that your favorite show or movie does not even support these formats, then good luck feeling disappointed. Similarly, if a movie or a show wasn't created with Dolby Atmos 5.1, then even after having 5.1 speakers on TV or separately in your sound system, you wouldn't be able to enjoy that content in true surround sound experience. So should we all just wait and not buy 4K TVs until all the OTT platforms are at least having enough 4K content with HDR support and at a fair price? The answer would be yes. Uh, but you see, you and I don't control the production of these TVs. So 4K TVs will keep coming from the manufacturer and so will the Full HD TVs keep disappearing from the market or will lose their value, just like how HD TVs did in the last 10 years. On the other hand, manufacturers have created technologies like upscaling to fit low resolution content on 4K TVs so that they look nice on your screen. At the same time, using intelligent image engine to make sure that the picture looks better in a higher resolution. Sony's 4K X-Reality Pro is a good example. Also, Samsung offering UHD picture engine in their TVs. LG has picture master processor and on its OLED TVs, the Alpha 9 processor. And recently, Samsung even offered 8K upscaling on its 8K Q900R TVs where they will upscale a full HD content to fit and look good onto an 8K TV as well. So we aren't left with a choice but to be a part of their upgrade cycle, irrespective of the content not reaching that level. And because in price comparison, full HD TVs come very very close to the entry level 4K TVs, it looks like an obvious choice for a few bucks more. So be wise before investing your hard earned money on 4K televisions. And don't just try to go out and buy the best available TV with the most jargons in it. Look at three things. What content will you be watching most? What will you be willing to pay for OTT plans? And what is the distance of viewing? Beyond 5 to 6 feet, it will be hard for you to differentiate between a 4K and a Full HD TV content anyway. Here is a great chart giving screen size wise optimum distance for every resolution from Forbes. Post thinking about these, make the purchase accordingly. By the way, gaming on 4K TV is absolutely amazing. So if you're planning to buy one for gaming, then yes, close your eyes and just go for one. As most games do take advantage of the HDR formats, 5.1 sound and come with 4K support on modern day consoles. Subscribe to the channel for a video on that in future. Hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.